Welcome back to Teach Amanda Fish Channel. In today's video, we're going to be doing Oysters Rockefeller. Now for you, this isn't your normal, traditional Oysters Rockefeller. We're gonna be veering off from that a little bit. It's fantastic flavors, you'll love it. Let's go ahead and get started. So you've got some fresh oysters. We picked ours up. We were doing some hunting on the eastern shore of Virginia, right near Saxis. We decided to go ahead, get a fresh bushel of oysters, met the boat there, and straight from the offload, we got a full bushel to bring home. A bushel of oysters is a fair amount of oysters. We weren't throwing a party or anything, so we also, there's a little bonus feature in this, we're going to be making you an oyster stew. So easy to make another delicious meal to have. If you plan this out right, that's a lot of oysters to eat when you're not throwing a party, but so worth it. Sort through your oysters. Get your medium to large size, not your jumbos too large. You don't want them like that one right there. That's just too big to fit on your tray. Not too big, not too small, but just right for your tray. That will affect the presentation and how your oysters look when they're served. Depending on where your oysters came from, they can also come with the mud or the muck that they came out of when they were harvested. You want to rinse those shells because they're a part of the presentation as well. Really aren't trying to get them squeaky clean. You're just trying to get them to the point that your fingers don't get covered in mud while you eat them. Well, I am obviously not a professional oyster shucker, but I was down in New Orleans not too long ago and I got some great video of this guy whipping through oysters like you would not believe. Let's take a look at how it should really be done. I do them in my, I do them in my hand, though, with old towels. You know what I'm saying? This shit, I can get you to think of myself and all that. Stuff. Right. You got, a guy, you got something you can balance it on. Yeah, the guy used to work, he used to be shucking them in his hand like that, too. Yeah. Perry, my man gave me the shuck like one time, and I was in an emergency. I thought <laughs> I had cut something. I thought I hurt myself. Said I hurt something, man. I turned it back over to him. I can make it look easy. <laughs> when you come back here, People be like, man, easy, man. The same gonna win all night long. Now look, he ran. <laughs> Even as good as these Gulf oysters were, you still can't beat our Eastern Shore oysters. All right, let's get back to our humble shucking. Make sure you save the juice as you pour that out. We'll use that later in the stew. It's phenomenal flavor that you're keeping in there, and it's not that good in the Rockefeller. We don't even waste the shells. We use them to fill the holes in the gravel road that we live on. For the rest of this cook, do all your prep work in the kitchen and take it on out to the grill. Of course you can do this on your stove and in your kitchen, but then they wouldn't be smoked oysters. If you have any interest for the tools and equipment that we use in this video, like that garlic peeler we just used, I'll put links down below to Amazon where you can purchase it. Next you need to purchase grated cheddar cheese and grated Gruyere, or just go ahead and grate it yourself, which is the way we like to do it. We use coarse sea salt, or you can use kosher salt, in order to create a bed for those awkward shaped oysters to sit in. It also helps contain some of the juice that drops out of the oyster in the cup if you have that oyster nestled properly. We're starting to get some rain soon. This cook is gonna happen real quick. The hardest part of it was shucking the oysters. Everything else from here, smooth sailing happens fast. Butter. Don't burn your butter. For this cook, we're going to be using the A-Smoke AS700P. It's perfect control, good temperature. We can do both the, use the searing function to make the spinach, all of this is done out on the smoker, and it does add a little bit of that extra flavor that you can taste in the food, even in the spinach. Shouts, garlic, sweat them, salt, pepper. Man, if you could smell this already, the aromatics are in there. Now we make the roux. Don't burn your roux. The spinach is not that unusual to incorporate, but what we incorporate into this is steakhouse cream spinach. 
and even top it off with a couple of other unique ingredients. Stay till the end and you'll check those out. Spinach. Just keep adding. It'll all shrink down until it's just about nothing and becomes the right textured sauce. Heavy cream. White wine. Gear cheese. Gear, 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 gear. Swedish cheese. Or maybe it's Swiss, I don't know. But it's a creamy cheese. I, I believe it's actually a Swiss cheese. But it's a creamy cheese that makes just the perfect thickness and texture. Salt and pepper, give it a taste. And now it's just an assembly area where we put our spinach on, then our cheese, and then our bacon. Time to switch over from that hot sear in the middle over to baking or smoking. I'm gonna dedicate this video to Curtis Holland. The cast iron that you see being used in, the, in this is a rare find. I wanna thank him and his family for passing that on to me. I do appreciate it. Curtis Holland, this video is for you. Don't forget, a bushel is a lot of oysters, so we've got that bonus feature, oyster stew, coming right up. So good. If you've never had it, you just don't know. Oysters Rockefeller. Mm. Now we told you, we promised you we'd have another recipe in this, and that's the oyster stew. You want to shuck another dozen oysters, pour out the juice, save the meat, melt a stick of butter, and roll that right into a trinity. Onions, celery, and carrots. While those are sweating, Go ahead and get a small piece of garlic, nothing that's gonna overpower the rest of the recipe. Once those onions are done sweating, go ahead and make your roux. Put a little bit of flour in and you're gonna cook that a little bit until the raw flour smell goes away. Roll right into heavy whipping cream and you gotta love the heavy whipping cream that comes. It's got that fat floating on top. That is the good stuff. Steady mix that up. And then once it starts to simmer, that's as thick as it's going to get. And don't worry, you can water it down some later with that oyster juice, as well as add in some milk to get the texture that you want. Old Bay is a local spice that's used in a great many seafood dishes. If you can't find it in your local area, I'll put a link down below, an Amazon link, where you can go to pick up that Old Bay seasoning. Old Bay is a salty spice, so you've gotta be a bit careful with it make sure it's to your liking now add the oysters in once it's simmering you're really not going to cook the oysters much after that and we also throw in a little bit of fresh parsley but again don't think you're cooking the oysters you're just heating them up in that simmering dish and then you're going to thin it out to the thickness that you want with milk Again, this is so quick and easy to make, and it's just comfort food. Fills the belly on a cold night. Fantastic meal to make with the oysters that you have. So YouTube says that this video is perfect for your viewing habits. This is my latest upload, and over here is a playlist you might just enjoy. I hope you liked it. If you did, please click like, subscribe, share, and come on back for more.